um, chapter 12, verses 12 through 31. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again to the hand to the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you, Janet. I appreciate that spiritual anatomy lesson from Paul's epistle to the Corinthians. So today we're talking about membership and not just the $45 per person that we pay for our members to belong to the Presbyterian Church USA, but we are going to look at truly what the benefit of being a member of a church entails. So let us pray. Father, open our eyes to the scripture lesson today. Help us understand the meanings of Paul's teachings in this epistle. May we reflect, may we learn. In your name we pray. Amen. The context of this letter is Paul wrote to the city of Corinth. And the people were feeling a little bit full of themselves. Its gifted members were elevating themselves in the community based on their works and gifts in the church. Paul, in his letter, works to chip away at this practice and teach them that they must come together to worship God and practice and teach coming together and worshiping God as a body, a community of believers... And in essence, he's saying to them, look, it's not about you, it's about others. So let's look at the big picture. The church is comprised of all types of people and not just the ones of favor. But together, it can be a beautiful thing. The analogy of the body is brilliant. I mean, when we talk about one's special physical attributes, it's easy for us to identify this when we listen to Paul's scripture. We can say, oh, look at their eyes. They have beautiful eyes. Oh, look at his hair. Doesn't he have a full, beautiful head of hair? 
But then when you think about other parts of the body, like the tongue, I mean, it's not that special when you think about it and how it looks, but it is special because what would we do? How would we eat? How would we swallow? How would we express ourselves? How would we spit? Or how do we taste and see that the Lord is good? Yeah, all parts are made up for the purpose, and all parts are made to work together. So it's a great analogy. Once we understand then this concept and apply it to the church, if you say to the church and you talk about the church to people, they likely have two things that come into their minds. There is, uh, and when we're talking about Christians, we talk about the universal church. And the, that is all those that believe in God are of one community, the universal church. Last Sunday night in confirmation class, I was explaining to my students that just because we're Presbyterian does not mean that those down the street are not also Christian. And they were really fascinated by this concept that I thought we could just move right along. Nope, we took, we took some time with this one. What about the assemblers, Amy? What about the, the Christian reform? Yep, they're Christian. Well, what about the congregational church? Yep, they're Christian. And it was a really interesting conversation as they gained the concept of what is the church, the universal church. Yet, those that say that they are part of the universal church do not belong. Some of them say, I believe in God, but I don't belong to a local church. Saying, I am a member of the universal church is an easy expression that one can use not to commit to a local church and join. The expression has a nice non-committal vibe to it, doesn't it? Oh, I'm a member of the universal church. But it's not practical. When you talk to someone who declares themselves as part of a universal church, I want you to ask them some good questions. Say, okay, so where do you meet? Oh, well, I meet wherever God takes me. Well, what, what's your Christian education program like? Oh, I just open the Bible and I let it speak to me. Who challenges you in your growth and your development and in your knowledge of God? Where do you find emotional strength? Where does your support come from in times of despair? Who offers you prayer, direction, nurturing, growth, and knowledge? The universal church is not practical and it's not biblical. Can't find it in the Bible. To the contrary, the Bible teaches us to become a member of a congregation and study the word of God together. When we study the scriptures, the key words of this scripture, the key words that point to working to a group, we hear words like uh, flock, leadership, together as overseers. I'm going to offer you some scripture that have these texts in it. All these words that define teamwork are not flying alone by the seat of your pants. So I'm going to give you some examples. Acts 20, 28. Keep watch over yourselves and over all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, a shepherd of a church of God. The Bible tells us to serve one another in the name of God. 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift you, each of you have received. Whoever speaks must do so as the one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ, to belong to him the glory, the power, forever and ever. Amen. The Bible teaches us to be accountable to one another. Can't do that by yourself. Hebrews 13, 17. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls and will give an account. Accountability is really important in Christianity. 
Because if we did not have one another to say, hey, coming to church Sunday? Are you joining in a Bible study on Sunday? Are you coming to Sunday school? Are you coming to choir to sing praises to God? Accountability. The Bible teaches us to be accountable to one another. And the Bible tells us to gather, to come together. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and do good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, to meet together as the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more that you see the day approaching. Come together. Friends, God made us to live, to work, and to worship together. All parts working together and supporting one another. All parts are vital. All parts are biblical. So today, we are offering this lesson of why membership is an important part of the church of God. Membership is biblical, and membership is practical. And membership takes teamwork. Together as a team, we experience the joy of our salvation through education and worship and fellowship. What are we doing after church today? We're joining in a dinner together in the name of God in fellowship with one another. The Bible tells us we cannot do things on our own, but as a team, we can support one another and offer accountability and sharing the example of Christianity with one another. 1 Peter 5, verses 2 through 3 says, To tend to the flock, there's that word again, of God that is in your charge, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you do it, not for sordid gain, but eagerly. Do not lord over those in your charge, but be examples to the flock. What does that mean? Just because you belong to a church does not mean that you can throw judgment on people here and there. Just because you belong to the church cannot use your power to hurt others. Listen to that scripture. It says, not for sordid gain. Do not lord over those in your charge, but be examples to the flock. What is being example meaning? Compassion, kindness, love, mercy, gentleness. Those are the attributes that we've talked about of God, and those are the attributes that we as members should show one another. Now I know that there are some people who are listening today that belong to a church, and for some reason they did not get along, and they left. And we talked about this in Sunday school. We said we're all human and we have experienced disagreement at some point in time in the church. But the truth is we cannot exist in this space if it is not with God. We must be committed to be together and not separate from one another. God wants us to come together. My prayer for you is that you will find community here at First Presbyterian. Your gifts can only be rightly used if they are applied. Membership in a church makes you apply your gifts. Maybe you identify with the tongue, right? Because you are important and you are necessary. Maybe you identify with the feet that carry out the mission of the church, the workers, Whatever it is, whatever part of that analogy of the human body that you type, put yourself to and identify with, you are important. You're important to the church. Whatever you perceive, know that you are important. Your gifts are unique, but if not given a chance to be used, they're useless. Use your gifts and join a church. When you do this, what do you receive in return? You are challenged to grow in your faith. You can participate in the direction of the church through mission, education, worship, and leadership. You know, I like to say as Presbyterians, we've got a committee for that. Presbyterian denomination is based on working together, creating organized worship, having committees to oversee the church. When you decide to belong to a church, you understand that God 
has a more burning, you have a more burning desire in your heart to follow God when you belong to a church. You have a desire to share and to love and to help fellow believers. The spotlight turns away from you as that was happening in Corinth at the time. And Paul said, nope, not you, it's them. Work on your church. The spotlight turns away from you and shines on others. I once went to a church where the ethos was to approach folks on Sunday morning before worship started and point out that they noticed that you weren't there last Sunday. The shaming was miserable, and it was in the, the congregation. Everybody did it. My faith faltered, and I said, how can people be so cruel sometimes? And then I came to this church one morning, and I'm pretty sure Carol Barnes probably greeted me at the front door with my kid. I was pregnant with uh, Megan at the time, and I had uh, Sarah and Katie in tow, little ones. And when I walked into this church, I experienced a living, working, breathing body of Christ that was accepting to me and who I was at my particular time as a young adult. This church who holds me accountable when I mess up, who comforts me when I'm down, and offers me the grace every day of my life. That's what God wants. That's membership. I joined this church for those very reasons. So if you've been listening thus far to this message, and you tuned me out right away because, oh, she's going to talk about joining the church, I'm already a member, right? I'm already a member, so I don't need to listen to this sermon. Well, you do. This sermon applies to you. Today's message is just for you, to remind yourself the important lessons and the reasons of being a part of a church. By our membership, we are offered accountability, comfort, and grace, just as a new member. We're talking in Sunday school now about why is it important to study the renewal of one's faith? Why do we go over the same scripture over and over again? Not to put a new spin on it, but to study it and understand how God works in our lives. It's accountability. Through the work of your membership, you become a part of a team. The kingdom of God. When called upon, it is your challenge to find a way to offer gifts that you have to make this body of Christ moving and working to make it a spiritual existence, both here and online. If you say, oh, I'm too old to serve, then pray. Write a card. Pick up the phone. Talk to other members. Celebrate the church. If you say, I'm too busy in my work, then pray. And offer ways that you can help. Use the gifts that you have been given to find a way to contribute. If you need ideas, come to me. I'll give you some. I promise. If you think, I'm not too busy, I have no excuse, then pray. Call upon God and say, Father, You've offered me so many blessings. What is it that I can do for you? Whether you are a foot, a hand, the tongue, make way because things are going to change in your life when you choose to get back into the game. As Paul wrote, strive for greater gifts and I will show you still more excellent way. Amen.